What's up everybody? Node Investor here. And today I got a special show for you guys. I've got a special guest, a Bitcoin trader that I'm going to interview and uh, he'll go ahead and share a little bit of his thoughts and his perspective on the market and uh, what what his experience has been with Bitcoin and uh, anything else I can think of. So uh, why don't yeah. you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, hey, uh, yeah, I'm Doug. Most people know me as uh, Westside Bitcoins. Um, you know, I, I sling, I sling Bitcoin in the Phoenix area. Um, so I've been doing this about four years now. Um, I mean, and honestly, it's, it's the the most fun I've ever had. Um, you know, doing any kind of work, I, you know, it's not even work to me. So. A lot of people may not know what a Bitcoin trader is or what a Bitcoin trader does. So okay. just briefly, what do you do exactly? Um, I mean, essentially all of what I do is, is, uh, is I'm a liquidity pro provider for the market. Um, people need to sell Bitcoin, people need to buy Bitcoin, um, you know, and I'm going to be your best option to, uh, to do that quickly, do that cheaply. Um, you know, a, a lot of people, uh, mo most of my business is uh, people that not didn't want, don't want to wait, you know, five to six days for a Coinbase uh, for them to you know, provide all their ID for small transactions. Um, so, and you can do bigger dollars, right? Because I know Coinbase or like Changely, I mean, they cap you like at 50, 60 bucks on your first buy, and then you got to wait months before you're able to oh, buy yeah. anywhere near $1,000, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And so you you help kind of speed that up along. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's where that's where I come in. Um, I drive all around the city, uh, all day, every day, pretty much. Um, it's it's definitely um, it's chaotic at times, but yeah, I I, I, I meet up with people, and um, you know, exchange their cash for Bitcoin, their Bit Bitcoin for cash, whatever they need. I, I think that's a great service, um, and I, I mean, I've used it myself. I, I got started a, a long time ago like that. Um, and you don't just do Bitcoin, right? You do uh, some of the other coins. Hey, whatever the market demands, man. Whatever they want from me. I mean, I'm out there. I'm working for you. <laughs> uh, you know. Um, yeah, I've, I've I've sold some altcoins. Um, I, I can't say that there's been a, a lot of demand for it, but I mean, you know, anytime you know, anytime I yes, hey, I'm there for you. So you, yeah, you mostly you deal in, in Bitcoin then. Yeah, yeah. I mean. In four years, you know, I've, I've done a handful, maybe five altcoin yeah. uh, sales. Myself included. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So um, you also, I, I noticed you were uh, standing by a Bitcoin ATM machine earlier today. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have uh, two Bitcoin ATMs in the Phoenix area. Um, uh, right now there's a handful of them. Uh, I operate two of them. Um, and, um, you know, that's that's just another way uh, you know i feel like as much as i love what i do you know the market's always evolving is always moving you know i don't know if the if the job for the local bitcoin trader is gonna how long that's going to be sustainable um I, as as the space gets um evolved and, and more services come in there's going to be faster convenient cheaper ways to buy bitcoin so you know i just kind of got my foot in in the door on this and uh launch these two bitcoin atms it allows me to service a, a larger market um you know and um whenever i'm not available i can direct people to the atms things like that that's great so just out of curiosity what was the price of bitcoin when you first got started <clears throat> um in fact my, my four-year anniversary of, of my first bitcoin purchase is, is coming up but uh, yeah i bought my first bitcoin at 67 dollars and wow in uh, July third, twenty thirteen, <laughs> we, we we've come a long way. I mean, oh, we're, yeah. we're over seventeen hundred dollars now. Um, it's crazy to think Ethereum is basically knocking on the door of a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. um, Litecoin recently has shot up. We're at thirty dollars today. Um, so, what do you, what are your thoughts on the market? Like, is this is this sustainable? Where do you think we're going? Are, are you surprised yeah. by all the recent price increase? I, I'm surprised every day, man. I'm just, I'm just on the roller coaster ride of my life, you know, and it, it's a blast. Um, you know, I m might have uh, got a few gray hairs over it by now, <laughs> um, you know, but I mean, it's a blast. Um, I mean, I, I don't even, I, I, I'm pretty humbled by this space, you know. Um, I'm not an oracle, and so I, I, I try not to, to, to posit that to any uh, market and price questions, man. I just who knows where it's going to be. I, I'm surprised. I learn something new every day, and yeah, it's, who knows where it's going to go. So, so what do you think the general public thinks about Bitcoin? Like when you're out working with buyers and sellers, 
what kind of folks are you dealing with? Are these like early adopters or are you dealing with more and more folks that are maybe investors or traders? What, what kind of uh, people are starting to buy Bitcoin now? I'm always surprised by some of the people that I that I do. I love my customers. They're, that's a, that's my favorite part of the business is, is, the, is the people that I meet and hang out with. Um, they're all my friends, you know. Um, I'm, I'm constantly shocked by how many people, you know, aren't necessarily in it for some of the ideology reasons that I'm in it for. And, and, you know, you know, many of my, my peers that I, you know, that I know in the space in the Phoenix area are, um, and they just, they, it serves a need for them, whatever it may be, you know, they need to buy something, um, you know, online, uh, sites that only accept Bitcoin and, you know, um, and they don't, they don't care about the price. They don't care about speculation. It is literally just a tool that's serving a need, and yeah. that's that that's a, a big evidence factor for why, you know, I think the, the market is going up the way it is. Yeah. It's just um, there's so much utility to it, and it's it serves it's you know it serves a uh, a need that I don't think any of the other altcoins are really service servicing. I mean, I just don't see the utility in a lot of them, and um, you know, I'm not necessarily a naysayer on the altcoins. I own some of the altcoins. Um, I think some of them have great potential, but I think that's all they are really right now. Yeah. I think they're very, very much a speculative, um, you know, investments in the altcoins. But I see Bitcoin in it. I, I'm always amazed that this is serving a utility. This is serving a need for people every yeah. day already today. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there's websites you can buy it at. I mean, we're at a, at a meetup tonight and yeah. we're ordering pizza and you can buy pizza and beer with Bitcoin. Like, yeah. That's amazing, right? So, yeah. um, you know, and I get the sense that it, it's definitely not mainstream yet. I mean. Uh, the group of folks that we're meeting with tonight are definitely early adopters. Yeah. You've got people that are mining. You've got people that um, are just now learning about Bitcoin. Uh, but the way I see it is I think we're kind of at where the Internet was in the 90s, in the early 90s, right? It, yeah. Very nascent, very early technology that I think blockchain technology is just going to change the world in so many ways that we probably can't even imagine right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's gonna sh it's gonna shed some of the negativity, you know, uh, in in the same time period. You, you know, you're saying in the early '90s of the the, the the where the the internet was, um, you heard a lot of the same things. I mean, you can almost parallel it perfectly. You know, the early some of the early reports on, on the internet. You know, what what could we possibly need the internet for? The internet's just a den of for for thieves and scammers and pornographers. Yeah. And you know, like what in the heck, you know, is this thing? We don't understand it, you know, and there's, and all we know is people are using it for, for bad, for illegal. That's how Bitcoin started, purpose. right? <laughs> and that's, yeah, it's the exact same, same uh, path. Right? And so, I mean, to, that's, you know, as bad as, as the, some of the opinions are and, and the news yeah. coverage is in, you know, in the larger grand scheme thing, it's a great thing for Bitcoin that we're following that same trajectory. Yeah. You know, and it's interesting you mentioned that because I feel like in the last year or so, there's been this shift where Bitcoin used to be that hackers, you know, Silk Road and buying stuff online to now it's kind of like institutional investors are getting in and they're talking about potentially ETFs and governments are making it a legal tender currency. Like yeah. it's made this shift now where you're right. It used to be maybe this dark market. Now it's become this very accepted, okay, alternative to, to who knows what, right? Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I occasionally get the phone call or the text from a family member or friend and, and uh, you know, hey, man, I was just on uh, Dell Computers. On Dell Computers, I was shopping for computers. Did you know they accept Bitcoin? <laughs> um, you know, and then, uh, you know, Microsoft, some of the Microsoft uh, um, gaming uh, store uh, accepts Bitcoin. Yeah. And just some of the other, you know, like the little babies growing up, you know, Bitcoin is, is shedding shedding that reputation. Yeah. Um, yeah, going more mainstream. And yeah, I love those phone calls. That's great. So let's talk about how anybody just new to this industry or new to this space, uh, what kind of tips or, or recommendations could you give to someone just starting out? So maybe what kind of wallet or where can they get more information? Um, I really like to stress um, the... The security aspect and and, and um, you know what I really harp on is is just making sure your bitcoins are backed up. I mean, there's there's so much content you could even just put out just in talking about um, recommendations for for new users. But I th I think you know um, in a short form what I would stress most is is that security. Make sure you're backed. Uh, I, I you know I always try to stress to people 
the uh, you know the mantra, not your keys, not your coins. And so essentially, what uh, that means is for the for the new people, um, there are um, you'll you'll find two different types of wallets: um, uh, online hosted wallet um, or, or a separate wallet, standalone wallet that you can download to your phone or computer. And that's usually going to be you usually tell the difference by if you're going to a website to access your wallet, it's it's most likely a hosted wallet. Um, and what that means is a hosted wallet. Um, it, it's just not good. It's um, it's it's a wallet provider that generates a wallet address or a Bitcoin address for you and a wallet for you, and then they offer it to you as a service. So an example of that would be like Coinbase. Coinbase, where they're they're acting almost like a bank. Yes. And, and the keys are in their hands. Yeah. Versus in your own so phone or computer or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things about Bitcoin, as I I stress to people, you know, with you'll hear the phrase, you know, be your own bank. But with that comes a lot of responsibility. Um, and I think it's it's important that people kind of do take responsibility. Our banking, you know, the way we're used to dealing and interacting with our banks is kind of hands off. We just kind of trust them. We let them handle it. Um, you know, Bitcoin is, is not necessarily for everybody yet. Yeah. Um, and you do kind of got to take some personal responsibility. So what I recommend is um, just, you know, make sure you learn how to back up your uh, to back up your coins and to avoid any of the hosted wallets. So wallet wallet examples I like to recommend um, for the phone apps are, are are the most convenient and easiest. But mycelium and Airbits are the ones I usually try to steer people toward. Okay. Um, those are both on iOS and Android. Excellent. I'll go ahead and drop a link on the the notes here for folks that are interested in looking into those. And uh, wrapping it up. What other coins are you looking at as uh, maybe some that have some potential uh, beyond Bitcoin? Um, you know, I, I'm not an, I'm not a Bitcoin maximalist, maximalist per se, but um, I do I'm heavily weighted um, towards Bitcoin just on my personal okay. opinions. Uh, but as far as the alts, I feel like I feel like the biggest play is going to be. Um, and this, you know, my, my words know better than it is just pure speculation, sure. but I feel like there's going to be a good play for the, for, for an, uh, anonymous featured coin, okay. you know, in that space, you've got Monero, Dash, Zcash, all kind of vying for that, 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 uh, that leader in the anonymity okay. of this, um, I, I, Bitcoin, you know, is by far from, uh, far from an on, on, anonymous. Right. So, um, yeah, I, f I, I don't. I feel like there's going to be very few that, in the long term, are really going to be um, strong currencies. I think most of them are going to fade away. Um, but I think, yeah, I think one of those guys is, is probably going to really settle into that role for uh, a good uh, option for an altcoin for uh, the an anonymity features. Great, yeah, good. So that's going to be it for tonight, guys. Um, Doug, Doug with Westside Bitcoins. Appreciate uh, the information here. And uh, I'll go ahead and link your information to this notes as well. Uh, so th thanks everyone for tuning in today. Until next time, take care.